This is Andy Peel for Boxing News. I'm John Mob promoter Eddie Hearn here in Manchester. Eddie, it was a pleasure. How is life treating you? Life is good. Good show in Vegas last week. Manchester this week. Haney Garcia in New York next week. Liverpool next gen. Canelo Munguia can't claim it, but also on the zone. Mexico. Riyadh for Fury Usyk. May the 18th. Taylor Cattrall. Bivol better be having the 5v5. It's a hell of a run coming up. So, uh, looking forward to a good good show on Saturday, particularly the main event. I think it's a great fight. Let's have to just start with this card before we come on to other topics. Jordan goes off about it's a fantastic fight. I'm interested to get your thoughts, Eddie. Obviously, with Michael Conlon winning Jordan's um, favour, some people are still questioning, was that just a one-off? Did he catch Michael at the right time, or is this a proper resurgence in his career? What do you think? I think that Michael is not the fighter that he once was, but he's still a very good fighter. And I think going into Belfast and stopping him, was a very, very impressive performance. He seems really calm and, you know, Barry over there has done a great job um, and Ben, uh, they've got a great way of instilling confidence in a fighter and he looks very confident to me. Zelfa, big moment for him, headlining in Manchester. This is exactly the kind of fight we should be making. Two guys that really could get a shot at a world title but are willing to risk it all against each other in a great domestic fight at world level. So I don't think there's anyone that can genuinely pick hand on heart confidently on Saturday. And that's when you know you've got a great fight. I take it you can't pick confidently, but unconfidently, who do you slightly edge towards? I, mean, I think Zelf is a sharp shooter. I think he punches very hard early in the fight. And I think he's very sharp. And I think if he lands on Jordan, he could hurt him. But... Jordan's very composed, he's very experienced, and I think Zelf is tight at 130. If the fight goes, I think early on, you might fa favour Zelfa, but if the fight goes long, I think it could play into Jordan's hands. So you've got a couple of world title fights on the undercard as well, amongst a host of young, upcoming talent, Eddie. What are you looking forward to from the rest of the card? I'm really looking forward to Gomez Jr. against Kane Baker to kick us off the main broadcast, because it'll be an absolute bloodbath. Ellie Scott is in a great fight, unification fight at 122. It's a really tough fight, 18 and Ola Ferber. Um, Rhiannon Dixon's got a very tough fight going for the world title as well. And you've got some great kids on the undercard, I say kids respectfully. Um, Jack Turner, Steve Clark, uh, Jimmy Sainz, um, Brandon Scott back as well, absolute crazy guy. Jordan Flynn as well. Um, disappointed that Cameron Vong fight's not taking place, but that will happen in June. Um, and he's going to really benefit himself getting out at the weekend. Eddie, Jaron Boots, Ennis. That is a superstar signing, to say the least. Yeah, it is. And I um, had a message from your boss to say something like, wow, you cheeky... So I don't know what it was, something like that. And I've never had a response like that from a signing, honestly. Not like, No, but so many messages from industry people going, wow, you got him. Five years I've been trying to sign this kid. I've known how good he is for so long. And I'm very, you know, honoured that he's chosen me and us. And I'm really going to do a great job with him because I think this kid is a pound for pound great. I think he's a Hall of Famer. Obviously, he's already a world champion. I know he can become undisputed at 47. I think he can fight and beat the likes of Spence and Crawford and all those guys. So going to get him active and show the world how great he is. I have to ask Eddie, what is the plan that you mapped out for him? Because at welterweight, it's not a division which maybe you're stacked with, certainly at the world scene. So what's the, the map? Anyone is anymore. Like A lot of those big names at 47 have moved to 54, namely Crawford and Spence. So now you've got guys like Barrios, who will become WBC champion. You've got guys like Stanionis, WBA champion. They're available. It's just a case of money. They're actually fights we can get. But I think the bigger names won't want to fight boots yet because they know how good it is and the money's not there in terms of the reward yet they will be once we build him as a star but he, he has a mandatory next which hopefully get him out june early july let's take him home to philadelphia and let's try and make those big name fights and particularly the unifications Obviously, in Boots' case, he's worked with PBC. Um, there's a lot of fighters on the PBC from, who are going to be wanting to get out, haven't fought recently because they're still waiting to officially announce their schedule. Is there anybody else who you think you might make a bit of a play for whilst they're waiting in the wings? Not, not just PBC fighters, but I would say we are talking to four or five fighters in the top 10 of the pound for pound list, or, or call it top 15, arguably, if you, if you make your own list. 
There's a lot of fighters available, a lot of fighters looking to get active. We can't take them all on because we just don't have the dates. It's impossible. And I don't want to under-deliver for a fighter, but it's a very exciting time and um, our stable's looking incredibly strong. Isaac Chamberlain. Um, pulling out of purse bids on the day, what was it, about an hour or so before? What, what was your thoughts on that entire situation, how it's unfolded? Disappointing, you know, because I just feel like people are just trying to mess around fighters, and I don't think it's fair. You know, two months ago, that they've known about this fight for two months, and I don't think they were ever going to fight, Chef. And what's the point in pulling out on the day of the purse bid other than to muck someone around? Chef could have fought in March or April, now he has to wait because they've messed him around. So, look, I get it. They know Isaac Chamberlain can't beat Chev. Um, but you knew that at the start. And it just annoys me that we have to go right to the purse bids to pull out an hour before. It's ridiculous. I've obviously seen Hennessy Sports tweets this half, Isaac Chamberlain um, tweeting you as well. Hennessy kind of denying the initial stance that you took that Boxer and Ben Shalom were involved with Isaac despite the obviously fact that okay. I never said it. I just said another duck. I mean why is people getting so precious that it's always about them? I mean the fact that Isaac Chamberlain's been with Boxer for his last seven or eight fights and will be fighting on a boxer card next, what have they got to do with it? Um it's just disappointing because it's the fights you, you've got all those fights now that they've pulled out of or people have pulled out of that would have given British fight fans brilliant fights. And it's just frustrating, you know. Are they hitting the point now, Eddie, where you're getting close to wanting to say to them, we can't really do business? We'll always do business because I don't want to rule out doing business with anyone if it's going to benefit my fighter. But you can't take them seriously. But as I said, it's like, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, like you've got like the Champions League and then you've got like Div 1. And that's the talent pool between the two organisations. And... Of all of those fights that I mentioned, we would have won every one of them. So part of me doesn't blame them, but just do it earlier. Do you know what I mean? Just say, oh no, we're going to fight Sislak. I mean, Isaac Chamberlain against Sislak, I mean, that is a, 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 you know, a great uh, cure for insomnia. So who the fuck wants to see that? What people want to see is Isaac Chamberlain against Chev. And I know Chev will go through him beautifully. So if they ever fancy it or they grow the balls to take the fight hit me up if not get on with your career and go and fight Sislak probably won't fight Sislak probably fight Vidal Riley who cares we want the belts and I have a, a cruiserweight in Chev who is ready to explode Eddie Joseph Park has been back on the scene making a few videos called out your man Anthony Joshua in unique fashion as well I've done a few interviews and I'm one who certainly advocate, isn't a big advocate for that rematch. Do you think we could see it? I think so. I mean, firstly, AJ wants to fight Joseph Parker. Like he's, he's quite a strange character, AJ, where he wants to take fights that actually don't necessarily benefit him. Do you know what I mean? Because he just wants to, he just likes being in good fights. So I know he wants to fight um, Joseph Parker. I know he wants to fight Deontay Wilder. Zangi's talked about, obviously you've got Hergovic and the, the two that he really wants is Fury and Usyk, but yeah I mean, I think AJ's next fight will be for the World Heavyweight Championship one way or the other, so it won't be Joseph Parker, but he's definitely open to that rematch and after that call out video, how can you not want to make that fight? Um, just well, a bit bored at the moment, Joe, isn't he? <laughs> he's like, he's actually just be, uh, had a new child as well so. Yeah, well there you go, he's got a bit of time on his hand It's a good excuse to get out of the nappies <laughs> Um, Eddie, just sticking with him of AJ, we went up to see Tyson Fury yesterday and he mentioned 10 fights he thinks he could have working with Turkey El Al Sheikh. He mentioned that AJ fought twice, obviously having a rematch along the way. When do you believe, if you could map it out now, a Fury Joshua fight could align and then a rematch down the line? Well, ideally, if Fury beats him on May the 18th, but you know, I heard Spencer's comments and Spencer's right. You know, there is two fights to the contract and it's very unlikely that someone would voluntarily step aside. But Things happen in boxing. And I, I said before that if AJ beats Nganu and Fury beats Usyk, the whole world is going to be calling for Fury against AJ. So we'll see. But I know it's more than likely they will have their two fights. AJ will probably fight for the world heavyweight title in the summer or back end of the summer. And then hopefully we make the undisputed fight. Will AJ be your headline guy in September? 
Possibly. I mean, nothing's been agreed, nothing's been signed in that respect. But ideally, we'd like to go a little bit sooner than September, but we'll see. One final one from me, Eddie. Um, Anthony Ard's come out saying that he's now a promotional free agent. Is there any chance that, not necessarily you guys signing, but he might be a bit of a curveball thrown into the five versus five at light heavyweight? No, I don't think so. Um, and given our relationship with Queensbury at the moment, I'm not in the, the race or the hunt to sign Anthony Yard. Um, so we'll see what happens. Everything else set for the five versus five? Everything is set for the best card you've ever seen in boxing. Eddie, appreciate your time. Thank you. Cheers.